Hi everyone, Miss Melinda here, coming at you on a dark and stormy day to bring you part four in my series on curses. And in part four, I'm going to discuss some famous cases of curses, some legendary tales, and some famous families who have been considered cursed. And we're going to discuss what kinds of curses they may have had, if they indeed had curses at all. And I'm going to go ahead and start with some famous families that have been considered to be cursed. And I want to mention that generational curses can be inherited, so they can exist on multiple levels within people. And this means they can be existing through cellular memory as it is passed down genetically. So the Kennedy family is one of the most famous families that is thought to have been cursed. And in the Kennedy family, they have displayed some of the more prominent characteristics of a curse. They've been known to meet untimely deaths. They've had a lot of bad luck in their family consistently throughout time. They have strange accidents, um, skiing accidents, car accidents, plane accidents assassinations, you name it, and on top of that there's been a lot of hardship, a lot of other types of hardship within their family, um, marital problems, problems with children, and, and all kinds of things in between. So the Kennedy family would definitely be a classic case of a generational curse existing within a family. And if we had to surmise what kind of curse this could be, I would think that this would be a spiritual or metaphysical curse, meaning that something is out of alignment spiritually or that something is, is um, happening with them metaphysically, which could mean that someone has placed a curse upon them or that in their own um, energetic connections, something is off and it needs to be righted. Because it's a generational curse, because it's been going on for a long time, over time and throughout generations, uh, having something off metaphysically or spiritually, it could be the result of something that happened many, many, many generations ago that still needs to be righted, right? So for example, that could be an ancestor of theirs that had a relationship with a spirit or had a relationship within a specific spiritual, magical, or religious tradition and then did not uphold some sort of responsibility. And that spirit or even the um, lingering energy from that spiritual relationship is still kind of following the family around and needs to be righted. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that there is is a, a vengeful spirit attacking them, it means that there is energy that is out of alignment and that something needs to be righted. Things need to be balanced. Things need to be put back into proper energetic perspective. Now, the other side of this is that we always need to rule out any kind of mundane or practical, um, everyday, real world things that could be happening within families or within individuals that could cause the same kinds of um, happenings, the same kinds of events as a curse would cause. And it does seem that the Kennedys have always been political exiles. And there are a lot of theories out there about how some of them have died and that it could actually be um, it, it could actually be tricky undertakings. It could actually be, um, you know, that that the government or that other individuals have had it out for the Kennedys since the beginning. So those kinds of things need to be considered as well. The Guinness family is another family which has always been thought of as being cursed. Now when you look at their history a little bit more deeply, the curse that they have is the curse of alcoholism. Alcoholism is a genetic condition which is passed down through generations. On top of that, it's the Guinness family. They invented and owned Guinness. So. Um, uh, having alcoholism running in your family on top of the fact that you have a never-ending supply of Guinness that can set you up for some pretty disastrous circumstances which seems to have be 
what what these folks uh, experienced. Now, you could argue, on the other hand, that the fact that they have those sets of conditions was somehow predestined or predetermined, and that in and of itself is a curse. Um, if you're going to take that standpoint, then that would be a kind of um, spiritual curse. That would be a spiritual curse, which is, you know, isn't doesn't mean that a spirit is plaguing them. In this case, it would be a spiritual curse that means that their family is predestined to experience a lot of hardship, and therefore it's part of their uh, spiritual evolution, their personal spiritual evolution. So there's a couple of different ways to think about that, but you do always have to take into consideration um, genetics as well as the physical mundane circumstances of a situation. Now the Getty family, they are a classic example of curses because they underwent a lot of strange hardship, a lot of um, interesting events, interesting unexpected events, a lot of hardships, a lot of bad luck. They had family members that were kidnapped, they had car crashes, they had money stolen, they had um, just generation after generation of difficulties and that would be a family that has the classic characteristics of a curse which would be metaphysical, magical, or spiritual. The Hemingway family is another family who has been considered as being cursed that has has other kinds of circumstances going on. When you look at the history of this family, they have alcoholism and mental illness running in their family. So again, these are genetic factors that are more physiological rather than um, rather than spiritual characteristics that are passed down through genes or passed down through cellular memory. The Rockefeller family is another one that has the classic uh, symptoms of being cursed just like the Getty family and just like the Kennedy family. Um, Winifred Rockefeller even killed two of her children before committing suicide. So that is a family which has had a lot of um, strange phenomena, a lot of bad luck, a lot of strange behavior, a lot of um, unusual activity, you know, car crashes, strange accidents, strange deaths. Those are some of the biggest characteristics of a serious curse which runs uh, through the family lines. Now I'm going to move on to talk about some more um, modern things and talk about pop culture a little bit. I'm going to talk about American Horror Story. And I have heard, and many people have heard, I've heard people who worked on the set talk about how there was a lot of unusual phenomena and a lot of bad luck that befell people after they worked on this series, especially the series that dealt with Marie Laveau and La Lori, the um, serial killer who tortured her slaves. Um, these were real characters and their story was told in, in this particular episode, but it was not told in a way that was respectful. It was not told in a way that was truthful. And they did have an advisor to assist them with this episode. I believe the advisor was Bloody Mary. She's a New Orleans, uh, well-known New Orleans woman who does spiritual work and um, who is an expert in these fields. And she was their advisor and she told them, look, um, Marie Laveau is going to want to be represented respectfully. Um, you shouldn't mix up these details, and, and they did. They changed the story because they wanted it to be more entertaining. They wanted it to be more sensational, and they represented Marie Laveau as somebody who was quote-unquote um, 
semi-evil, somebody who is coming from much darker perspectives than she actually did in real life. And they represented Vu Dao in a way that is, is not respectful, in a way that's not accurate of the traditions. And then they made La Lori um, a character who was somehow worthy of redemption in the end, when in fact she was a serious um, psychopath and a racist who tortured and killed her slaves, and they made her a, a character who was worthy of redemption. So the whole plot is a bit racist. Um, neither of these characters were represented in the way that they should have been. Uh, things were very much out of alignment in that storyline. And as a result, many people who worked on this, especially people who were in charge of the storyline and in charge of these kinds of details, they had a lot of ill luck and, and strange phenomenon befall them after this. So that's an example of a spiritual curse that can occur when we anger a spirit. Okay, I'm going to move far back into the past now. There was an 11th century yogi who had supernatural powers, and he was named Goraknath. And there was a man of a royal descent in the royal family named Prithi Narayan Shah. And he went out into the forest and was offered food by the yogi, and he refused to eat the food. The yogi actually regurgitated the food, and asked the asked Prithi Narayan Shah to eat it, and he refused. And then Garagnath stated that Prithi's royal family would be cursed in the tenth generation. And in the tenth generation, Prithi Dipendra killed his parents and seven other people before attempting suicide. And he was crowned king while he was in a coma and then died. So this is a this is a famous um, legend. This is something that is well known in um, Indian myths, and it would definitely fall in the lines of a curse, and it would definitely fall within the lines of a magical or metaphysical curse. This is a curse that was purposefully placed upon a family. There were very specific parameters for this curse. It was done through magical means, and it came into fruition through magical means as well. The Grimaldi family, family of Genoa, they are the ones that became the royal family of Monaco in the 12th century. So Lord Rainer the first was within their family and he raped a young girl who eventually became a witch and she cursed him with an unhappy marriage. Now this curse is believed to have spanned generations. Um, Princess Grace was further down the line in their generations and she died in a car crash and then her daughter was plagued with marital and relationship problems. So they're a family that has always been believed to have been cursed and believed to have been cursed through magical means by a witch who was vengeful, who was seeking revenge for being raped. And it's well known that um, this curse came to fruition and that this family has always uh, suffered a lot of hardship from this. So that would be a magical curse. The Countess Caroli, Caroli, the Countess Caroli was a famous witch and she cursed the Habsburg family. So the Habsburg family was waging war against Hungarian rebels who wanted to take over their kingdom, who were basically fighting for equal rights but wanted to take over the kingdom. And the Countess Caroli, she had a nephew. Is that right? She was the mother of a Hungarian rebel who was captured and killed. So she cursed their family and she cursed the whole conflict. And she cursed the man named 
Francis Joseph, who was appointed to oversee the conflict with the Hungarian rebels. So then Francis Joseph's wife, his son, and his nephew were killed and conflict engulfed the entire empire. So the Habsburg family, they lost that conflict. Their empire was basically destroyed and torn apart. The man who was overseeing the, uh, the conflict with the Hungarians, his whole family died. And this is all believed to have come into fruition because of a witch who was the mother of a Hungarian rebel that was captured and killed. So definitely that would fall under the lines of a magical curse. The Curse of the Hope Diamond. So the Hope Diamond was a 112 carat diamond from India, and it was reportedly stolen from the head of an idol in the 1600s, and then it was believed to have been cursed by the priests of the temple, the temple where the idol originally uh, existed. I would surmise that it is unlikely for the priests to to curse the diamond, although they could have placed a curse upon it that said, if someone steals this, then let some ill befall them. That's possible. But I would also feel that if this is a diamond that was living on an idol, an idol means a statue of a god or goddess that's being, um, that's being venerated or being worshipped, and idol really isn't a word that I would prefer to use, but Anyway, if this diamond lived upon that statue, then it would have been dedicated to this deity or to the spirit. So from my perspective, it's very likely that it would be the deity or the spirit who is angered by the stealing of the diamond, and therefore there is some negative or unwanted energies associated with that diamond. So this diamond was passed on to King Louis the Sixteenth, King Louis of France, and it was worn by Princess Limbali, and it was worn by Marie Antoinette, and they were all beheaded in the French Revolution. And even the jewelers who kept the diamond ended up dying mysterious deaths. And because the diamond survived, these guys were all beheaded, the diamond survived, and there are still stories of pretty much everyone who has been in possession of or at least worn this diamond has had um, strange and mysterious phenomenon. So I would, I would categorize that as a spiritual curse. And I would also categorize it as a um, circumstantial curse because circumstantial in the way that these individuals didn't directly do anything themselves, but they came into contact with some unwanted energies. And those are all of the um, famous examples of curses that I have, famous and historical. And... I hope that you find this somewhat entertaining as well, at least this episode of, of our series on curses, <clears throat> because these are just examples. These are just examples to kind of um, contemplate and consider um, what kinds of, of categories the curses could fall within and what kinds of stories are circulating out in our world about curses and kind of contemplate um, how how we think of curses in our world and if we're thinking of them in a way that is um, healthy or unhealthy and if we're thinking of them in a way that is um, erroneous or in a way that makes sense to us spiritually or energetically or magically. And this was also just kind of a fun way to talk about the different categories of curses while being able to give examples of those categories of curses as well. And I want to say I'm not perpetuating the idea that these kinds of curses can be easily um, incurred or easily obtained, easily um, sent to people or easily received. I don't believe that curses like this are something that's easy to pick up. I don't believe that curses like this are something that is common. I just wanted to give some fun historical examples of different types of curses so that we have some practice in categorizing them and some practice in kind of thinking about them in different ways. So I hope that you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for 
our videos number five and six because we're going to talk about how to prevent and protect from curses. And then in video number six, I'm going to talk about curses and curse breaking from a magical perspective. So stay tuned for those next two videos. And if you haven't watched videos one through three, go back and watch those because there's some important foundational information about curses and the way that I'm defining them. So thanks so much, everybody. Stay blessed.